Welcome to Pinball Mayhem. My name is Jeremy Ajima, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this nifty little multimeter that has an amp clamp on the end. And we're going to go over it a little bit, and I'm going to show you some practical applications. We're going to use the pinball machines behind me to uh, check out a few of the features and uh, let you know some of the things this can do. Um, I really like this meter, and that's why I wanted to show it to you guys. Um, I learned about it by watching a YouTube channel called BigClive.com. He is a tech channel and he does all kinds of cool teardowns and whatnot. Well worth watching. Uh, also, if you like that, check out his live channel, which I believe is Big Clive Live. Um, those are a real hoot. His live streams are crazy. But again, back to this meter. I learned about it there and this is available on Amazon. This is the uh, UT210E and it's not cheap it's like 50 bucks but the main reason it's more expensive i feel is because of this amp clamp feature and um i don't use this as a disposable meter i mean i i keep it around the house here and works really good for me but let's uh let's set this on top of the machine we'll take a closer look at it it's nice and compact it's got the place for your leads and the end there place for two AAA batteries and this is your amp clamp right here um, what's nice about this is it is AC and DC sensing capabilities on it. Turn it back around here. Of course it comes with your typical instruction manual. Actually this is only in English so I guess that's a little atypical. But, um, or not very typical I guess. But got a lot of neat stuff in there. We'll just do a nice slow pan in case you really really want to watch this stuff. But shows you some practical type things and whatnot. This meter can do quite a bit. Also comes with your basic lead set. It's fairly long. Got some uh, typical ends there. And then it's got right angles at the back. This is how you test for voltage and whatnot capacitance all kinds of cool stuff but uh, yeah this is generally how I got it set up unless I'm just doing some sort of amp reading which isn't all that often super basic controls here uh, first click is going to be powered on um, we've got AC voltage here uh, it says true RMS we hit the select to do our other functions and then it's also got a hold function and if we hold the hold function, we get a backlight, which is pretty cool. So if we hit the select once here on voltage, we get DC. Hit it again back to AC. Our next one in line is the resistance. Uh, it's auto ranging. Again, we got the hold function and zero function. This is for the audio uh, buzzer. So if you're doing some sort of a, a buzz, ohm, you know, you want to check for continuity. Hit her again, we got a diode test. And then this is for checking uh, capacitors. It's a very basic test, uh, but it, it can be useful. And then back to our ohm scale. And then the next three here are going to be for amperage. And I don't believe you can do an amperage with the test leads here. It isn't set up like that because normally they have an additional, they would have a third. Um, on a standard multimeter, they would have a third plug to do the amp. So I don't see where they got that here. So only through the amp clamp can you do it on this meter. Okay, so um, yeah, we've got the same thing. we got AC. Hit their deal again. we got DC. Then back to AC. So we got various ranges. Two amps. Well, it's basically almost zero to two amps. And two amps to 20 amps. And 20 amps to 100 amps. And then this one up here is kind of cool. Um, it's basically... You can sense voltage or an electromagnetic field with the, with the tips here. Um, and obviously my body has a little bit of a, you know electrical field in it, so you kind of get that. But if you move it next to a wire that's plugged in, uh, you, know, you can check for current without testing. It's a non-contact voltage. Um, so that's pretty cool. All right. Let me get out a few little pieces of uh, test stuff, and we'll also open up the machine, and we'll show you a couple different ways to use it. I've added a few things here that... I typically would use this for 
and uh, just to show you the, some of the non-contact stuff I brought out an extension cord all right pretty easy stuff here checking the battery that's super easy to do I'm gonna click it on voltage we're gonna hit our select so we have DC and then we're gonna put our battery right here tilt this up so you can see it we'll get our two leads over it doesn't matter which way they are and there we go we got negative 7.58 because I got the terminals backwards which is okay we can still read the voltage on it not an issue all right this is below 9 volts because I use this in my wireless microphone and this is a battery that's no longer good for me on the microphone but so that's pretty nice easy peasy okay next thing diode this happens to be next thing on our test here let's go well let's see first off we by default we start out with the ohm symbol so I've got a nice big resistor here it's a 5 watt 220 ohm 250 I'm sorry we'll see how accurate this is so I don't know what percentage range this resistor is but we'll just set our two leads on there 247 not bad for such a big resistor like this so it's quite acceptable and it, it went in kilo ohms so it's 0.247 so 247 ohms is what that rod reads we'll just flip it around and see what happens 247 all right certainly within spec all right then we go next on the test we'll hit selection button once and we go to our um, audio just to test for continuity on something so that's pretty straightforward um, we'll just use this as an example now because we we have a big resistance here it's not showing any continuity but if we move over to this side it shows it so that's pretty straightforward that's what that's used for checking out wires and stuff seeing if they're broken all right, we'll hit it again. And then we've got the diode symbol here. We'll go into our diode test. I have a standard set of diodes here. Get our capacitor out of the way. We will set one on one side and one on the other. And we're not getting anything that way. And we'll flip our leads around. And we get our reverse current there 0.582 we'll just check the one on this side here nothing that way and there's that one so that shows the diode is working correctly all right and then we've got one more nanofarad is what it's showing here what I've got is a capacitor a brand new capacitor well actually it's not brand new this is probably 10 or 15 years old <laughs> possibly more um, 450 volt 33 oh, 33 there. hopefully I'm saying that right okay and this is an electrolytic capacitor All right, we'll go like this here and we'll see what it reads let's hold it down let it do its thing 33.7 33.6 excellent I'm just gonna reverse the leads for fun this is just a very basic capacitor test but you can tell if it's shorted or not by using this test out here so it's really quite handy all right that is good all right so what do we got left well for this test since I until we open them uh, up the machine and have some voltage going through it is a little hard to tell, show you the how the amp clamp works here we'll move it up to the non-contact voltage sense here uh, we don't need to have these leads on so I'll just pull them off just so they're not in the way otherwise you could leave them on all right so grab our power cord here we don't know if it's plugged in or not might be in the wall or something is it is it live yes we have voltage here and that what's great about this is here's the other end of it there's nothing plugged into it but yet this can sense 
that there's voltage in here, which is pretty darn excellent. And the little light on the end there flashes and say, hey, that might still be live. Better check it, buddy. All right. Let's uh, pop open high speed here. And uh, we'll show you inside a pinball machine and uh, some of the things that this meter can do. This is the inside of my 1986 Williams high-speed pinball machine. We're going to show you a few things we can do here with the multimeter. And because we have a power wire switch right here, which is separated into its individual wires, we can easily test the amperage that this machine is taking right now. Let's do the amperage test first. That should be pretty good. All right. So what I'm going to do, wait for this to focus here. Here we go. We're going to turn it to the, we'll try the 2 amp first. The game is just in um, attract mode, so the only thing that's running is light. So it's nothing really high powered. So I can go here to these wires down here. All right, so I've got the meter set on the 2 amp, and I'm leaving it on the AC because we are measuring the high current, the high voltage on this machine. I'm going to move this, try to get this out of the way here. And there we go. We are currently pulling in 1.8 amps approximately depending on what's going on in the game all right so since we can only go up to two amps i'm going to change this to the 20 amp scale and we're still showing the same we're going to hit the start button here okay because i don't have any balls loaded you saw that it jump way up as the solenoids fired and tried to start a game so let's trick the game into thinking it is loaded with balls and we will start a game okay we've got we've got it going here make sure we can see what's going on all right there we go there's our amp meter can see it now let me hit the right flipper it jumps up quite a bit jumps to two amps so imagine all those solenoids and whatnot going off on here so that's one of the neat things you can do with this so you can use it to figure out um, approximately how many amps each pinball machine draws and uh, you can kind of figure out how many you can go for per circuit. But of course, when this thing's going and playing like crazy, you're drawing a lot more amps on it. Now we can go to back down to two amps here, and we'll go to DC. All right, we're going to test out the flipper coils because they are DC powered on this one. Well, here we got the meter. I'm going to put it right around this one. We'll hold it right about in the middle, and I'm going to hit the reset on it. And we'll hit the flipper and we'll see what it does. Ah, 1.8 there is what I saw. Now it only goes on high power for a short time, so that's the hold uh, amperage. So it's drawn 1.6. And that is how you test the AC and that's how you use the AC and DC features on this meter. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the 
U210E. Like I said, it's available on Amazon as of 2022. In the beginning of 2022, it was approximately 50 bucks. And you go, man, it's 50 bucks. Yeah, but it's going to be a tool that's going to last you for a while. It is not a high-end multimeter, but it is also not a cheapo budget meter. So depending on your needs, you know, I've been using multimeters for a long time. This was a really good value for me. Would I buy this as my first meter? Only if I really needed the amp clamp. Otherwise, I'd just stick with the basic one. But I like this because of its size. It's handy to have around the house. And um, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, you got any questions, reach out. Also, you know, check out the rest of our channel. We have got a ton of videos. I did a video um, on some tech stuff. Logic Probe. I did a video on a Logic Probe, which is pretty popular. And another uh, tech video we did was a video on a ultrasonic cleaner, and that's been also very popular. So check those out or check out the pinball content. Thanks for watching.